Hi mathematicians, welcome to your first math lesson online. Um, today during the lesson you can stop it at any time. You can also rewind it and rewatch a certain section or you can go back and rewatch the whole thing. Uh, that's the nice thing about doing this online. Okay, today we're going to talk about the objective. The objective is what you need to get out of the lesson. So by the end of the lesson, after today's lesson, you will be able to explain the value of a digit in a given number. The vocabulary you need to know is place value and digit. And both of those words should be reviewed from third grade, but we're going to take a look at those. Okay, why do we group things together when we count them? Well, one of the reasons we do that is because it's more efficient. It's much faster. So instead of counting these individually, if they were grouped together in a jar, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If these guys were grouped together in a jar, this jar would be labeled a ten jar. Okay? So if I looked at this, I'd say, oh, that's ten. But we didn't have it in there at first. We had to count them all. And so it slowed us down a little bit. Well, we group things together. Once we get 10, we group them. And if we want to look at the number, we have the number 10. Also, this green slide thing right here is a base 10 block. And it is a group of 10s. So anytime you get uh, 10 little ones, just like we did with the marbles over here, we group them together and it's automatically a group of 10. Now, go ahead and count these marbles. Go ahead, I'll give you a few seconds. Oh, seconds are up. That was too slow. Well, I grouped those marbles for you, and it so happened that I grouped them in tens. So I counted out ten, put them in one jar, and I ended up with all these jars of marbles. Let's count how many jars there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten groups of ten. There's ten marbles in a jar, and we have ten jars. So how many marbles do we have all together? Go ahead and say it out loud. If you said one hundred, you are absolutely correct. Well, remember when I told you that if once you get 10 groups of something, you need to put them in a new group. So there are 10 marbles here in each jar, and I have 10 jars. So now we're going to pour those into this jar because this jar holds 100. We had to group them together. If we look at all those marbles in that one jar, this is what they'll look like. Well, to represent 100, we use this symbol. Let me move that back up so you can see it. There you go. Here's the symbol, the number, okay? So this is how we normally write 100. And then on the base 10 blocks, this is the symbol that we use to show 100. There are 10 rows, rows go from left to right, and 10 columns, columns go up and down. All right, so this is what we use to represent 100. Well, if we take a look at the next slide, we have jars with 100 marbles in them. Well, let's count and see how many jars we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Remember what I said? When you get a group of 10, you need to make them into a new group. These are separate right now. I have separate 100s. Well, if I have 10 groups of 100, how many marbles do I have? If you said 1,000, you are correct. So here's what 1,000 marbles looks like. This is what the picture looks like when we use base 10 blocks. This is a thousand little tiny blocks put together. We grouped them together. The front section right here is what we just looked at when we talked about 100. Remember? But we got 10 of those and put them behind each other. So they stacked up and they made a cube. And that is 1,000. When, when counting items, we bundle them in groups of tens to make it easier to count. It's much easier. Each group of tens has its own name, so this is what we refer to as place value. So when you're a one, you're all by itself, we call you a one. Well, once you get ten, you have to get into a new group, and now you are called the tens. If you get ten groups of ten, now you have to become a new group, now you're a group of a hundred. If we get one hundred jars of marbles, or 10 jars with 100 in them, it becomes a group of 1,000. So each time you get a group that has 10 of those, you have to move over to the left to the new grouping, and that's what we call those ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Here's what the base 10 blocks look like. They're the same thing as the marbles up on top, 
that we've been looking at. But here's the base 10. So here's a single one. Here's a stick of 10. Here is what 100 looks like. And continue to the left, there is a block of 1,000. Those are base 10 blocks. If we look at a place value chart, you can also see we start again with the ones, move next door, tens, move next door, hundreds. Now, do you notice the different colors up here? There's a reason those are colored differently. They're also colored in your math book. From the ones over to the hundreds, so, so there's three spots. These are called periods. And each period has a name. This whole period right here, this is the ones period. And it repeats itself. Ones, tens, hundreds. Look over here. This says thousands. This tells you what period you're in. And then it says tens and hundreds. So this is kind of like the one thousands, ten, and hundreds. So this period is called the thousands period. So everything that you put in that period, you're going to say thousands. So if I put an eight right here, let me just write a number. Oops, that's a sloppy number. Let me get rid of that one. Okay, that's better. So we have 82,143. Okay, well let's look at the next one. There's a next period over next door to it. So again, you've got three places in each period. And also when you see that comma, that lets you know that you're getting into a new period. So you know the name's going to change. The one millions, the ten millions, and the hundred millions. So what do you think this period is called? If you said millions, you are correct. So this period is called millions. This period's thousands, this period's ones. It always repeats itself. Ones, tens, hundreds. Now you're in the thousands period. Ones, tens, hundreds. Now you're in the millions period. Ones, tens, hundreds. Okay? Now each number that is in a place, so this is the ten thousands place, each number is called a digit. The digit, we use symbols, and a number is a symbol, to represent that particular number. And in this case, the eight is the digit in the ten thousands place. If I ask you the value of it, it's 80,000. If you have eight ten thousands, it's 80,000. Let's look over here. If we have 100, there's a one in the hundreds place. We write it like this. One of those, 100. If we have four tens, if you have four tens and you count it, that's 40. And if you have three ones, we'll put that in the ones place. So to say this number, I'm going to add those up, 143. And that's the same thing we got here, 143. Here's another section of the chart. Here's the ones period. We have ones, tens, and hundreds. Here's the thousands period. And again, ones, tens, and hundreds. Remember, a digit is any one of the symbols used to write a number. So if I put an 8, a 6, a 4, let's do a 1, 2, and a 3. Each one of these is a digit. What place is the digit 6 in? So what place would we call that? The 6 is in the 10 thousands place. So if you have six of them, here's how you write 10,000. If you have six of those and you add them up, how much do you have? Wow, that's a lot of writing. That one got a little sloppy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it's going to be worth... 60,000. Okay, that's the value of the six in the ten thousands place. Okay, remember each one of these is a digit. 
6, 8, 4, 1, 2, and 3. Those are digits. The value of their place is where they're at. So this is in the hundreds. This is in the hundreds, but it's in a new period. The hundred thousands. All right, all of this should be review. Today we talked about place value and we talked about digit. Those are the two vocabulary words that you need to know. After today's lesson, you should be able to explain the value of a digit in a given number. So if I ask you tomorrow what a digit is, you should be able to tell me. And if I ask you what the value of that digit is, you should be able to tell me how much it's worth. Okay? Thank you.